I just put the replacement assignment in for you. Okay. Actually, what I did was, we talked about SBAR, was it last week? Yeah. Right? Which is that wonderful form of communication. This is not a difficult assignment, okay? There's five little mini cases there, okay? Where it's okay, you've decided, and I spelled it out for you. So it's not even like you have to make clinical decisions, it's just strictly your communication, right? So. This is the situation, this is the patient, this is what's going on, you decide that we need to do this, communicate that to the physician. Okay, so all I want you to do is turn in a paper with five answers, basically, of that S bar. So, Dr. X, we have Mr. Jones here for chest pain, right, is our situation, he's had this for three days, blah, 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 your background is the sentence or two, your assessment of the situation and your recommendation. So quick, succinct, Five, six sentences, bang, that's that one, right? So it's just more of practice that communication. How would you communicate that? How would you call that doctor and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what I recommend we do. Hey, this is what's going on. This is what I recommend we do, okay? The situation should be very clear, okay? So that's your assignment. It's doing the same date as the other one was, which was the 27th, which is like two weeks from now or so, okay? The assignment's available now, so you can do it Today, you can do it next week, whenever you want, okay? You, you have the tools to be able to do it. Like I said, it's nothing clinical. I'm not expecting you to make any clinical decisions. I've told you what the answers are. It's just a matter of you communicating that to the physician. Make sense? When you go to lab this week, this is a reminder, please make sure you get your random number when you go to lab, okay? You will be assigned a random number that you will need to hold on to. You will get an announcement next Monday of what to do with that random number, okay? Make sure you look at your announcements next Monday. And you're gonna have something to do next Tuesday morning before you come to class, okay? A quick, easy thing, like printing something or whatever, that kind of thing, okay? So make sure you're looking at your announcements next week on Monday and Tuesday. Is that clear, distance sites? Yes, sir. yes, okay, good. Okay, so today and tomorrow we're doing acute coronary syndrome lab, okay? Patient case lab, so you're gonna have a patient case. This is the entire thing. You, on your own, individually, are gonna write a soap note, okay? So we're still gonna have your two people at your table interview. You guys can kind of get together to discuss the beginnings of the soap note, but then after that, you're expected to break off on your own when it comes time to the plan and the education, okay? So when you're writing the plan and the education, you may have kind of come up with a plan with everybody like, okay, I think we should do this, that, but then you write that on your own, okay? Questions about that? No? I need control. Okay, so get out your tablet, your phone, your whatever it might be. We're going to talk about our pre-lab questions. Here's your code. God, I got to turn the music down now because that's all driving us. You like the music? Yes. Who wants to have the music? Raise your hand. You lose.
Alright, you guys know, do you know what it is? We're gonna get a vote now. Okay, here we go. 
this just isn't working for me. Let's see. We need something to pump us up a little more. Here. <laughs>
tachycardia, palpitations, right? They should feel it kind of okay. come, coming out of their chest. Pain, that'd be a good one. Okay, all those kind of things are what we're going to be looking for in somebody with ACS. Speed racer still winning. Which objective information will we want for a patient in ACS? Yes, you can't select all, just don't choose the wrong one. Look, you got 10 seconds for this one. And anybody who chose A is in trouble. 16 of you chose A. Who chose A? Come on, be honest. Why did you choose an echo? Because you didn't have time to respond. I just hit the first key. I had a, I had a three and four chance, and I happened to get it wrong. What do we use an echo to diagnose? Heart failure. Heart failure. Yes. Question. Through an echo? No. An echo shows us fluid, and more importantly, it shows us the fluid moving. I mean, you'll see soft tissue, but you're not going to see the fluid inside the vessels. You're going to see big pockets of fluid. In fact, when somebody comes in, we do what's called a fast exam on them. If they come in like as a trauma patient, that's where we take the ultrasound and examine the four quadrants of their abdomen to see if we see any free fluid, like if they ruptured something. Okay? An echo is nothing but an ultrasound of your heart. Okay? And it's examining, and they do how much of the blood that comes in is actually getting pumped out, and that's where you do your injection fraction. So echoes are for heart failure, not for ACS. Speed's maintaining his lead. Somebody kick speed in the knee. What does MONA stand for? Once we fix their MI through 
PCI or whatever it is, or if we decide we don't need to do any sort of intervention, then we're going to discharge them home post-MI, then yes, they need to be put on a beta blocker, probably an ACE inhibitor, and I will argue that with you in lab. Because I disagree that that's, well, ACE inhibitor probably, but then they get then maybe a stat and those kind of things that Dr. Steinberg went over with you, right? So don't confuse the immediate treatment with, okay, when we're sending them home treatment, okay? So no, they don't need an ACE inhibitor right away. They sure don't need a statin while they're having a STEMI, because I don't think we're going to fix their cholesterol in a minute and a half, right? So think emergent treatment, so we solve the MI problem, and then post-MI treatment of all those medicines we need to send them home on, right? Beta blocker, dual antiplatin for how long? For what, one to 12 months? Is that what I just heard? Three months, six months, a year? The right, the right answer is, I don't know, is it their first heart attack? If it's their first heart attack, then it's for how long? Sure, it's not six months? I think it's six months. Um, but then if, it's, if, if they've had a second one, there's actually studies that show anywhere from three months to a year. But if it's their second one, then basically you go on it indefinitely. Okay? So that's the next question is how long have they had it? Or is it their first one? Okay. So. Speed, what happened? You didn't answer the question? Here we go. Which is not additional initial therapy added on to ACS for MI? I just told you, we don't treat their lipids, right? Not, not initially, right? Very good. Yes, we definitely don't add on bad beta blocker on you for it. Definitely correct. Okay, here we go. I'm getting ahead of myself, I guess. And I'm, so I'm basically giving you the answers, and some of you are still getting it wrong. What is the time associated with the STEMI? Which one of these is correct? PCI within 30 minutes. PCI within 30 minutes. God, you guys work in some very effective hospitals. That, ideally, they, what is the time associated with PCI? What is the time like? 90 minutes. I will tell you, most hospitals aim for less than an hour. And most hospitals get less than an hour. Okay? PCI within three hours? Thrombolytic within 90 minutes? No. Thrombolytic, if you're going to use it, should be done within 30 minutes, right? PCI within 30 minutes. That would be, an, that'd be a wonderful thing if we could do that, but that's not the time associated. You learned a couple different times, right? You learned PCI 90 minutes, thrombolytic 30 minutes. Now some studies are extending those out a little bit, but the basic core of it is 30 minutes and 90 minutes, whether it's thrombolytic or PCI, right? Well, what'd you choose, eh? Okay, here we go. Which is not a medication used upon discharge of an MI? It's all the iPad's fault, I understand. The iPad made me click sublingual nitro. Anybody that comes in with any sort of ACS should always be discharged. The first and foremost drug they get you learned in ischemic heart disease is fast acting nitroglycerin, right? Beta blocker, yes, we just talked about. ACE inhibitor, we just talked about. What are some other drugs we said that we want to send them home on? An HMG CoA reductase inhibitor, I will argue with you, it depends on what their <coughs> lipid levels are, but yes, a lot of them will. Aspirin, Aspirin and another antiplatelet, right? We want that dual antiplatelet therapy, okay? And the ACE inhibitor is up there, okay? Bring it on. Oh, look at that, that's a big lead. I don't know if you're gonna be able to catch it. Which is not a risk factor our patient has? <laughs> Oh, you guys didn't even look at the patient yet. We have lab in an hour. <laughs> Good, all you people who didn't even look at the case yet because you got lab tomorrow. Oh, crap, I don't know. <laughs> Our patient.
it exercises three or four times a week, right? If you read the chart, some of you, a lot of you are just looking with a blank face because you didn't actually look at anything for lab yet. That's scary since lab starts in an hour and 20 minutes. Um, our patient actually exercises all the time. That doesn't mean sed Not everybody who has a heart attack is obese and sedentary, okay? Many people drop dead of sudden cardiac disease and sudden cardiac death who are actually very physically active. I know somebody who ran ultra marathons. You know what those are? Those are the 50 and 100 mile marathons like they run from here to Key West. Drop dead of a heart attack walking into LA Fitness. Boom. Okay, so not everybody who has heart disease and has a heart attack is overweight, sedentary, and everything else. I'm sorry? There was part of the family history in our patient. Okay. And, oh, close the gap, close the gap. What problem does our patient not have? Last question, think hard. Even if you didn't read it, you should be able to get this from what I just said. Our problem, our patient is not obese. Our patient is totally normal weight. He works out three or four times a week. He does everything he's supposed to do. Still had a heart attack, okay? You guys want to see the one? Why did North Star screw up? Yeah, North Star screwed up. Oh, man. Good job, Russia. You get a free eraser. <laughs> Okay, so does anybody have any questions about lab this week? What we're doing? <laughs> if you have Tuesday lab, the soap note is due Sunday by midnight. If you have Wednesday lab, the soap <laughs> note is due Monday by midnight. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The people tried last year, and it was so funny. I give people zeros. I love giving people zeros. If you have Tuesday lab, guess what? The upload spot, spot doesn't close on Sunday at midnight. There's just one upload spot. But I know who was in which lab. So some of the people last year decided that I was a little late. I'll just upload it because the thing's still there and they'll never notice. I know. Okay? If you have Tuesday lab, you better have it uploaded by midnight. Okay? Because guess what? Guess what I do at 12.01 on Monday morning? Because believe it or not, I'm up. I go through and mark everybody who's had theirs turned in. So I know who turned it in and who didn't. So that if you turn it in late, I know you turned it in late. And if it's not by an email saying, hey, I forgot to upload this. Sorry, here's my soap note. Then you're trying to pull a fast one on me. Do I want you to use the inpatient or outpatient? I tend to like the inpatient because the charts on it are better. They're basically the same thing. It's just more of a use your own, whatever you want to do, adapt one of those to your own. I like the charts, like I've told you guys, I like the labs in like a chart form so you can see the trends. I like it that way. Even if it's an outpatient, it makes it easier to read. Okay, now, this is your first soap note, okay? Your first complete soap note. You're going to be worried about the points and all this stuff, and, and, and so you're going to want to write everything you can in there. You do need to write important stuff, okay? It's okay if you have a long soap note. Too much information is better than not enough information at this point. As we go through this series of courses, you will be taught how to trim it down, okay? So for now, I want you to focus more on making sure you get the information in the soap note and making sure it's in the right place, okay? Please don't be putting objective information in the subjective section and putting stuff about their dyslipidemia under the ACS. Focus on what goes where, okay? We went over this once before. We'll go over it again in each lab as far as... We went over it here in, in uh, Davie at least last time where, you know, this is how you walk your way through it. Okay, so for the benefit of our distance sites, basically when you get to that assessment plan, okay, you should be looking back up at your etiologies and everything else, and all of your, your, your plan, your pharmacology, your everything else should be addressing problems, right? The etiologies and then your assessment of the problem, okay? Or your assessment of the current therapy. And what you plan on doing about it, 
You better than address when it comes to monitoring and follow-up. If you recommended things that should be monitored and followed up, so when you're writing that monitoring and follow-up, look at what you wrote above it. Does that need monitoring or follow-up? If I told them to start on these blood thinners, right, I better follow up and make sure they're not having signs and symptoms of bleeding and things like that. Okay? Same thing when you go to write your education section. Look at that, look at the stuff you recommended. Make sure you're telling the patient, hey, I'm starting you on drug X, Y, and Z. I want you to stop drug Q. I want you to make sure you follow up with your physician in one week to get these labs done. I'm starting you on this medication that requires certain levels, so you need to go back and follow up with your physician to make sure where your levels are. And just so you know, your goal level is 50 to 100, whatever it is. Okay, you need to inform your patient of all that information. Any other questions or concerns? Yes, ma'am. My kidney doesn't work. That's not a question at the state. When, um, when we upload, do you want to type it into the computer or can I scan in our website? I want you to scan in your, I want you to type it up and then scan in your document. Okay, upload your document. On your document for this one. Wait, do you want us to type out our results or do you want us to like scan in our handwriting? Like, when we oh, are you asking does it need to be typed or handwritten? Yes. You're talking about a soap note. Yeah. So for your soap note, does it need to be handwritten or typed? Is that, is that what you're asking? Yeah. The question is, does your soap note need to be handwritten or typed? What do you guys think the answer is? I'm going to tell you this. We've gone back and forth with this a thousand times over four years. You know if you have good handwriting or not. You're all over the age of 20. You better, well, I hope you're all over the age of 20. If not, you're way smarter than I was. Um, you know whether you have good handwriting or not. I would strongly suggest you type it, and this is why. Because even if you think you have good handwriting, if I can't read it, it's not there. Okay? And 250 soap notes, right? Between everyone. It's a lot of reading. My eyes get tired. If your handwriting is a little sloppy, I'm not going to spend five minutes trying to decipher what's written there. Okay? So I would strongly suggest typing it. Any other questions? No? Palm Beach, San Juan, Auditorium B, Kendall? Any questions? No, we're good. We are good. Thank you. See some of you in a little while. Have a good day. You want to go